So if you've been on the channel for a hot second, you know that we enjoy doing the, the absolute bold predictions. So we're actually going to start a segment uh, on it called Scold Predictions. Nice. So a little bit outlandish, a little bit out there, but something that we love to uh, see happen. So seventh round pick, Kyle Chris Hinton. Yes. Uh, also, if you're new, we excellently sometimes Freudian slip and call him Chris Hinton. Uh, Chris Hinton was a borderline Hall of Fame offensive lineman for uh, the Colts back in the day. Uh, yeah. But Kyle Hinton, uh, the pride of Washburn University, seventh round pick for the Minnesota Fighting Vikings. Small, small, small school dude. I think I'm just going to put it on the table. Just like Kyle Hinton will start as a rookie woo, woo, at some point. Now, I I'm not talking about, hey, 17 people are abducted by aliens, and then it's Kyle Hinton and a bunch of dudes who are working at Lowe's the other week. No, it's not going to be like that. It's going to be meritoriously based. I think that's a word. Uh, and Kyle Hinton will become a rookie starter for the Vikings, and he'll be a, a stud interior offensive line starter for the Vikings for many years to come. And I'm fully ready to ride this train uh, into the ground, so let's talk about today. Of course, Kyle Hinton. As you know, uh, 6'2", 295, uh, was a senior at the University of Washburn. Go Ichabods, uh, was a three-year starter at left tackle for them. Uh, 33 starts on the blind side. Uh, senior, he was a 2019 second team uh, Division II All-American. Nailed it. Uh, snubbed by the Senior Bowl, even though they do like to peruse some small school guys. Snubbed by the Combine. The disrespect is real up in this mofo. But uh, at, at his pro day, uh, put up a 4.8840, 34 reps on the back. Bench, as well as a 34 and a half inch vert, just absolutely big explosiveness. Uh, the, the jumps are huge as well, and he's got the speed, he's got the agility, he's got the strength. He just you do wonder, you, you do wonder and worry about the level in competition. Now, I'm not ready to call him Larry Allen coming out of Sonoma State University, which doesn't even have a football team anymore. But I, I'm not not ready to call him Larry Allen coming out of Sonoma State that doesn't have a football team anymore, right? And, and, and also, Kubiak came out and said that, hey, you know, he projected inside the guard, but we're going to try him out in center. Uh, I think it's a great way for Kyle uh, Kyle Hinton to potentially make the 53-man roster because uh, if they're comfortable with him uh, as a backup center as well as certainly a guard, then all of a sudden that could free up a roster spot. And I think Kyle Hinton could make the team, uh, could impress even more. Now, what's working against him is no rookie camp, which I, I think he certainly could have made a big impression uh, on the coaching staff. Uh, no OTAs uh, as of now. It doesn't look like there's going to be any in June uh, before there's um, you know the break, the regular regularly scheduled uh, summer vacation for the NFL. Uh, but once it gets into training camp in late July, I think something may be going on there because I you know I I obviously get fired up about some some of the late round small school guys, uh, but there's just something about Kyle that. It just jumps off the page. And yeah, I understand that uh, the little game film that you can get on him, he's certainly dominating. But also, that's what you expect a, a small school guy to do. Like, you want a small school dude just completely come in and destroy. That's why I wasn't necessarily sold on Mekhi Becton. Even though you know, Louisville isn't necessarily a small school, he, he just didn't dominate the way that you would expect him to, right, with all those physical attributes. But with uh, Kyle Hinton, you, you have a guy who uh, plays with great uh, leverage, plays with great strength, has an awesome anchor right away, and movement skills for days perfectly tailor-made uh, for this outside zone scheme and he could surprise he really could because yeah, as much as we're talking about hey Drew Samia is going to be right guard hey probably Elfline is going to be left guard you, you never know I, I don't think anything is guaranteed like I, I think that Bradbury will be at center I think O'Neal will be at right tackle and then everything else is up in the air like maybe Reef is at left tackle maybe he's at a guard spot maybe Ezra Cleveland's at left tackle Maybe he's at a guard spot, even though we're not thrilled about that. But, I mean, nothing is promised to anyone. And, and don't tell me for a second that Kyle Hinton could come in, this unheralded, uh, un, uh, nearly undrafted nobody. Uh, all of a sudden, he outperforms Oli Udo and Dakota Dozier and Pat Elfline and Drew Samia. And then all of a sudden, uh, as the coach's favorite you know, of Kubiak and Dennison, all of a sudden he's starting. I could easily see something happening. Now, he had to. I, had, I was racking my brain for a hot second. It's like, what? is like the lowest that you've seen an opening day starter. Now, I'm not saying that Hinton could be an opening day starter. Maybe it's a spot where they roll elf line for a couple of games. He doesn't perform up to snuff or maybe even Dozier. And then all of a sudden, uh, Hinton gets a shot. But I, I had to think back. Probably the lowest drafted opening day starter offensive lineman was Zach Fulton. Uh, that I can remember is 2014 uh, for the Chiefs. He was a six-round pick out of Tennessee. Uh, he's the starting center for the Texans now. Uh, that's probably the lowest I can remember uh, as a six-round pick coming in and starting. So 
would necessarily blow the doors off the roof if Kyle Hinton comes in and just wins. Just absolutely manhandles dudes, which he certainly already has that strength, uh, and then just so shows amazing versatility. He's great in pass sets, and then also just able to get into second level because he's athletic as hell, uh, run outside zone. It wouldn't shock me at all. All right, so that's actually the, the fun thing about the offensive line, where it's been much blind for the last couple of years, but Spielman has brought in a lot of young, up and coming talent, and they're just going to compete. Like any cut, well, and Elfline, any combination you tell me, Udo, um, uh, Cleveland, uh, Samia, uh, Hinton, uh, Blake Brandell, I don't care. Just let the best five out there. And if Kyle Hinton is one of those best five, put him out there. I think I think he certainly could be. I'm fired up about the Ichabob, and, and you should be too. All right, but your thoughts. Kyle Hinton potentially starting as a rookie. Uh, let us know in the comments section below. Scold predictions. Also, subscribe for Daily Vikings Takes. If you want to support the work, pull some of the Venmo. Please give us a follow on social media as well. But the next time. Skull, production value.